Well, let me tell you something, brother. Randy Hogan here, and it's live and in color with Wolfie D. You are listening. You are in the right place. Don't tune out. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again, Live and in Color with Wolfie D. My oh, man, Jimmy, across the street. What you been doing this morning? Man, I have been running the old-fashioned errand, my friend. <laughs> Air- yeah. I don't like it much. I try to run mine uh, all in one day, I think. Yeah, me too. So chores or errands, what do you prefer? Uh, errands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most- <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, chores suck balls. I've been, so. I've been talking to our friend at uh, Pro Wrestling Loot this morning, old nice. Jeff, and uh, looks like we're going to have some uh, PG-13 slam buddies in the near future. And it's not gonna, it's not going to be individual ones. It's going to be double-sided. Jamie on one side and me on the other. And yours truly is going to do the artwork. Me? No, I'm just kidding. That's amazing, <laughs> Wolfie D. That's amazing. Yeah, I think those would be pretty cool. Dude, that'll be awesome. So basically, the back of your head will be a hat because Wolfie is so much taller <laughs> than Jamie. You know, I was thinking about that. Uh, he's just going to have to go uh, hatless on these. Not the, not the <laughs> else. <laughs> That's just funny. But anyway, those are awesome. And dude, I mean... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, think about it. You don't even have to wrestle that rat anymore. You know, or wait, hold on. Was it the rat or the, not that, that oh, kind of rat. When I was a kid when I was the, the, the rat that I used to beat up. Yes. To do yes. Much, practice my moves on. Yeah. 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 He was actually though, he, he was a little bigger than those things are. And okay. he had like his arms actually. You know, moved almost in every way, and legs too, and head. Look, you know what I mean. He was flim- flimsier. Okay, so like one of those big ass carnival bears or something. <laughs> Not that big, but he was <laughs> goosey. He could sell, man. He could sell good. That's awesome. <laughs> Better than Ricky, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's amazing. But, well, uh, anyway, so that's very cool, dude. That's like, I mean, Macho Man, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, and a million indie guys all have those. Right. <laughs> so that's very cool, man. About time. I didn't do her artwork, by God. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, dude, that could open up a whole new door for you, brother. Hey, y'all out there. I know y'all are some of your wrestlers. If you want Wolfie D to draw your slam buddy, now I'm just saying that that adds 10, 20, 30 extra bucks to it, you know? So that's amazing. That's the best news of the day, brother. So for those of you that haven't, now will be your time to sleep with PG 13. Yes, exactly. <laughs> girls, <laughs> girls in Louisville, you can get many girl listeners, though. So, dudes, whatever your deal is, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, we're open to that too. I mean, you know, just drool on the Jamie side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So, I wonder if our guest has a slam buddy. Ah, I don't know. He might. I mean, you all you would have to. He might just but have to have actually serious uh, copyright stuff there. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good he'd point. Have the, he'd have to do his old outfit. You know? Yeah, for right. sure. But uh, yeah, man, let's take a break and let's come back and let's talk to Randy Hogan, brother. Brother. Yeah, I mean, what's he going for? His name's Randy. Come on, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We'll be right back after these messages. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A -a one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. 
Hey folks, to get your official Live and in Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, guys, we're back. And as promised, uh, our guest today is none other than Randy Hogan. And I met him. um, Randy, what would you say? We met, what was it, two years ago? Um, Between one and two, yeah. Yeah, something like that up there for our man Eric Sims, uh, <laughs> ESS Promotions, and 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 Eric, if you're listening, I will take a little money for that plug. Uh, <laughs> uh, in, in about a week, so and uh, another book, it, right? <laughs> yeah, just add it on to that one. <laughs> Dude, I got a lot of things I want to talk to you about. First of all, man, your health is is the first thing I'd like to know about because last time I saw you. You know, you you wasn't in the best shape, but you know, with the walker and all that. Well, how, how's it going, man? Well, brother, it's the same. I I, I hate to say it, you know, it's gotten no better. They did another uh, operation on my back. Which when these people say wrestling's fake, let me tell you, brother, there's nothing fake about it. Okay. Right. Um, I hate that word. So I had a, a third. So now I've got, uh, like I said, I've had operation. I had my neck done. And I had some. Fusion done, and they had to replace the disc there, and that didn't fix me. So then they went down my spine, down my thoracic, which is the main part of your back, all the way down to the lumbar. Yeah. And uh, put in uh, plates and screws there, and that didn't fix it. So I have a nerve problem, is what it is, and they can't yeah. find it. Oh, so uh, basically, that's got me down to a uh, to a walker. And actually, yesterday I got one of those scooters, you know. Uh-huh. Those powered things, so yeah. uh, just to help me get around for for any type of long walking, or whatever. But uh, yeah, it looks yeah. like uh, from what they say, this is going to be my life the rest of it. So yeah. I guess I'm yeah. thankful to have this part. But yeah, what happened is you know it just it, it just years of compression and stuff on the uh, yeah. on the yeah. nerves, and eventually sometimes they sometimes in time they will open up. And sometimes it's like a strand of spaghetti, you know, you just squish it and they don't uh-huh. come back. So yeah, evidently mine's not coming back. So, so I'm well, going to be I'm hollering. Sorry to hear that. Um, but I, I can, uh, I can relate. I'm not, I'm not to that point yet, but it's getting there. Uh, a lot of numbers. Well, you're, still, you're still a young kid. You got years to go, right? <laughs> yeah. Young. I wish but I'm not. I'm not a senior citizen yet, but close. But uh, man, lucky I, you. <laughs> I hate to hear that for you, man. But uh, so uh, let's get into some stuff about uh, Randy Hogan. Let's let's talk about, um, but the the obvious. I'm going to get to it, man. I really want to talk about kind of the way you developed into just straight up doing Hulk, but it didn't start that way. Um, tell me about like your your very early career. And what your intentions were, what what got you into it, and, and what how did you get that direction of this is what I'm going to sure. do first? Well, I'll try to make this a, a, a shorter story. Um, I got really got hooked from my grandparents. I was probably I don't know seven eight years old in Detroit, and uh, you know my parents, mom and dad, really didn't care nothing about wrestling. And, uh, but my grandparents, boy, they believed every last punch. I mean, they were on the edge of the seat watching it on yeah. TV and they lived yeah. right across the street. We lived right across the street from them. So I would go over mm. and watch wrestling and I, and I just got hooked as a little kid, guys like the original yeah. Sheik and Bobo Brazil and killer Kowalski. I got to see, yeah. uh, 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 buddy Rogers and Pat O'Connor and the original gorgeous George, who used to throw gold hat pins out to the crowd and stuff. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, Lou says, so all those guys are the ones that really 
got my interest. And, and of course, back yeah. then, um, that was storytelling, a lot of storytelling. So, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, you couldn't, you couldn't wait to turn in, to tune into the, uh, to the matches or to go see them. So, right. uh, so I did that my whole life and just became a fan more and more and more. Um, was working, I used to play in a band anyway. So we traveled, we used to play a holiday in circuit in the south. Oh, we Jimmy, Jimmy's gonna look at that, man. Jimmy's a Jimmy's. A oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you a bass player like Hulk? <laughs> no, I'm a drummer and trumpet oh. player. Well, that's we a, did a lot of. Yeah, okay. well, well, I didn't mean to understand it. the bass. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, so we were playing a holiday in circuit. Yeah, we had Wednesday night station to do TV taping uh, in yeah. Columbus, Georgia. Uh, mm-hmm. And of course, I go all the time. And I went once, and um, I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> Anyways, wrestling. I never wanted to be a wrestler, but really? I was loved it so much. I wanted to know what was real and what's fake. Like people right. say, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. so I got to know an old wrestler named Eddie Mansfield, the Continental Lover. Oh yeah, and uh, him and Wahoo McDaniels, they would come and stay the holiday, and we were working at. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like a kid in the candy shop, man, you know, I just I, <laughs> these were my idol type people. They were real, larger than life. I was like seven years old again. Right. So, uh, so I got to know uh, really Eddie really well, and. And uh, Ted and Jerry Oates, the Oates brothers, owned a gym yeah. in Columbus. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, actually trained people. Actually, um, when I started, Marty Gennetti was just finishing up with them. And they were, oh, okay. So they trained Marty Gennetti and sent him out to uh, Kansas City, I think, to work with Harley Race at the time. Okay. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I didn't know. So I called Jerry and... Uh, uh, moved up to Columbus and went through some trading. And 13 months later, I had my uh, my first match. It was just a, a, a police athletic league. It was just a student show or, or class. And uh-huh. uh, it was fun. And again, at that point, well, shit, I thought I do it all. So that's <laughs> all I wanted to do. So now back to where I was, I go to the matches on Wednesday. And one of the guys I trained with putting up the ring. I said, Bill, what are you doing? He says, well, they rent the ring for me when they come to town. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we got talking. And, did, and I said, what are you doing? I said, well, nothing, because I didn't want to wrestle. <laughs> so he said, well, I'm wrestling at this, uh, this little bar. And it was a little bar, believe me, up in mm-hmm. Athens, Georgia. He says, why don't you uh-huh. go up and watch me sometime? Bring your stuff. I said, mm-hmm. well, I'm not going to bring my stuff, but uh, I'll come up and watch you. Mm-hmm. So I did it for a couple of times and it was fun. And there was, you know, the crowd was like maybe, maybe 30 people sitting in the bar, you know, hooting and howling. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I, he got me into it. I took my stuff one week and said they were short somebody. So again, the promoter said, oh, you want to work? I said, well, sure. Now again, I trained 13 months. I know it all. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the guy says, okay, <laughs> he <laughs> says, you're going to wrestle a guy named Animal, and he's going to go over. Uh, yeah. I said, okay, no problem. So I go back <laughs> in the locker room. And my buddy Bill, I said, Bill, I'm wrestling Animal, and he's going over. Does that mean, like, he's going over the top rope, or I'm going <laughs> over? Yeah, that's, so, so that's how much I knew, you know. He said, no, dummy, that means yeah. he's going to win. <laughs> so uh so anyways, I had the mask and he said, What's your name? I said, uh, Randy Franklin. My dad's uh-huh. name was Frank, and of course my name's Randy. Uh-huh. And I always had the uh I was built a little bigger, better bath there, and I had a tan, had the of course dark brown hair, always mm-hmm. had the mustache, so Yeah. So uh so I went through the match and promoter uh said, Guy, you wanna come back next week? You know, I said, Well, okay. So he said, but we're going to call you Hal Hogan. <laughs> Hal Hogan. He said, well, you know, because Hogan was a, this was like early 80s. You know, he, he's okay. on his way up now. Yeah. So uh, I said, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll, I'll do whatever you want me to do, but let's not do the Hal Hogan. You know, we'll go, <laughs> I don't know who the hell they're talking about. So how about Randy? He said, okay, you're Randy Hogan, and you're going to be his cousin. There's nephew or something. I don't know what. So yeah. I went home, told my girlfriend, 
honey, I got to do is gimmick thing. So now bleach my hair blonde, my eyebrows, my mustache. <laughs> and that's how it all started. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> that's, so the Hogan name was given to me by this little uh, hot dog and a handshake type of promoter up in uh, Athens, <laughs> Georgia. That's so I, I started wrestling. Yeah, in the little town, man. It was pretty cute, folks. But uh, so that's really the whole story of that. Alvin, Athens, Georgia? Yeah, it right. might have been. <laughs> might have been. <laughs> I, I think that's the guy that ran Athens. I never worked there, but I'd always heard about it. And, like, I think he it served like been, but, yeah. chili or something like that to the fans or something. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. It was, yeah. That was his Okay. It might have been. It might have been him. Again, I'm going back. Uh, yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Forty years. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that. uh, so that's how the whole thing goes. And then you know you meet guys, and then uh, you know they're working in another little place somewhere else, and you go see them, and then you go visit them, and and the courtesy is if if, uh, if if you got a guy come in, you know, you introduce him to the promoter, and then. You know, you get a chance to say, "Hey, if you could use me, you know, use me sometime." Yeah. So that's how the work progressed and progressed, and you get to know these wonderful promoters, and finally, you get to a uh, you get to a match where they bring in a name guy, like a Wolfie right. D type of guy, you know. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That's so I work. Yeah. So I work in this show, and uh, this is probably a a year later, yeah. and. Alabama's own action Mike Jackson was on the yes. card. Yes, yeah. now he is uh, he is still wonderful. Man. That boy could go, and he's like seventy two years old or something. Yeah, walking the ropes, but, uh, the whole ring. <laughs> yes, 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 phenomenal. Um, yeah. He does a lot of these little conventions, you know. I see and talk to him right. all the time. Anyway, um, sort of I said, Mike, I said, how do you get on TV? Now again, they have the territories now. They were doing uh, house shows and doing TV taping in different houses and that. So yeah. uh, he said, well, he said, I don't know if, you know, I take guys up there all the time to work. So why don't you ride with me and I'll see what I can do. No promises. So I went up and it was the same thing as, uh, as that little bar. You know, they needed another guy and I was there and had my stuff. And I think right. JJ Dillon always take you back. Time. Always take you back. Like a doctor, like a doctor, always has the have in the trunk. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I went in and uh, um, wrestled my first TV match against the Warlord of the Barbarian. Uh-huh. So, so I'm in the, I'm in the ring with. Oh yeah, and I and I was. I mean, I'm, I'm just so excited, you know. I walk in lot now again. I'm still a big fan. Okay. I walk in the right. locker room, you know, you got Flair, you got Steamboat, the Midnight Express, and Jimmy Cornette and Paulie Dangerously, or Paul Heyman yeah. now. Um, you know, all these guys, man, I, I was just in awe. So, uh, and they didn't know what to do, where to go, whatever else. And mm-hmm. uh, so they say, yeah, you're us in the Barbarian, the Powers of Pain, I guess it was. <laughs> right. so, uh, so I'm in there, yeah. So a Barbarian goes to shoot me in the ropes. And he goes, Babu. You know, like when there's an element of risk or something, you know, you shoot the guy in the ropes, you kind of say something, elbow, drop kick, whatever, you know. Yeah. And he goes, Babu. And I go, what the <laughs> fuck? So, anyways, I go, I am going full speed again, lots of adrenaline, scared to death, but excited too. I didn't know what was coming. So, I hit the ropes that come off 100 miles an hour. And next thing I know, I got this big foot in my face. Oh, man. Broke my nose. Now this is on TV. Broke my nose. I knew, I knew, Blood going I knew all what over. he was going to say before he said it. So I knew it. Oh my god! He, he, he was saying "big boot." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just, nice time to learn. So I guess he took pity on me and said, "Hey, come on back next week." And that's how that all got started. So I had, uh, you know, one of the uh, the few regular guys, me and George South, Italian Stallion, and oh yeah, there's about six of us. Yeah, well, now this was NWA, Crockett's NWA, yeah. and then, of course he sold everything to a Ted Turner, and uh, yeah. they let a lot of the, the the guys, a lot of the jobbers go. Um, they wanted people that actually could work. Um, yeah. 
they were trying to get away from just the squash jobs, you know, now they're still going to have them against yeah. like against a Vader or somebody who's bigger than life and mean than that. Um, yeah. but then they want somebody who could get in with a, a Brad Armstrong or a steamboat or somebody and actually yeah. do some mat wrestling at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so we got on and, said, uh, uh, then he said, well, <clears throat> after doing TV, so can you do house shows? I said, we're well, sure. I'll do whatever you want. So then I started doing little house shows. Then he said, well, can you travel? And I said, sure, I can travel. <laughs> so that's how that whole thing went um, mm-hmm. for quite a while until I was wrestling a match against Rick Steiner. And, now that was, that, that, was that, let me stop for a second. Was that for Crockett or was that for WCW? Where What were you talking about just then? Where was that? Steiner was WCW. Okay. Um, and the war, no, the he, warlord story. The I think it was. That was, that that was, was NWA. That was Crockett. Yeah. Got yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm in there with a Steiner, and you know Steiner gives a lot of suplex and belly to backs and stuff. And I had landed on my head. And I always hurt, you know. Yeah. So I, uh, he, he went. I was working him, and he came behind me, and it was, uh, here it comes. So I wanted to turn and catch it more on my, on my upper shoulders, you know, rather than the top of my head. Yeah. And I just turned turned too much and actually cracked my clavicle. Oh, and man. Old across the front, yeah. So I felt like yeah. I was shot. Okay. And now Rick yeah. Steiner is, he's harmless, but he's, he was dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we're going through things. And, you know, I was really hurt and I told the referee, and uh, so they went to the finish, and of course, the Steiner gives me a uh, uh, a power slam, which felt like a bullet going through my shoulder. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that was it. So I moved. I came back down to uh, Florida, and uh, healed up. My parents lived down here, and said, "What do you want to do now?" And I said, "Well, geez, I don't know. What am I going to do for a job?" So I went back into the restaurant business. And they were going to close the restaurant. I said, well, don't close it. Let me buy it. And they said, well, we don't have a franchise program. I said, well, let's start one. So anyways, so I bought a restaurant. Yeah. And then I bought a second one. And then I got divorced and lost the first one. Oh, <laughs> and then man. I bought another. So I ended up with six of them. And then I sold the last one about, uh, well, I guess it's been about, yeah, 10 years ago <clears throat> when I got married. And uh, here I am. And then here a few I years back, yeah, here I am. A few years back, I get a phone call out of the clear blue. You know, um, yeah. well, a vendor says, "Hey, you want to do the convention?" And I said, "Oh, what? I didn't know they had conventions. I knew nothing about this stuff." <laughs> so he said, "Well, yeah." He said, "We'll fly you up. You know, you sign an autographs, pictures, and everything, which I provide." He said, "We'll give you a room." He said, "We'll feed you." And we'll pay you, you know, like some hundred dollars. I said, Jim, sign me up. <laughs> so that's how that's how it started. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm down to what might be, uh, I don't know, I think this, I'm, this might be my last year of these conventions. So I think I'm going to ride off into the sunset. But between now and then, I'm good to go. <laughs> I love and I'm it. so yeah, thankful kind of- for guys like oh, you guys man. that keep us old guys relevant, you know, especially the old jobbers or enhancement or whatever you want to call it. You know, I've never been got mad or embarrassed by those terms. They never bothered me. Yeah. You know, right now it's, you got a podcast. It was okay. A, and you got a job. So you go to your yeah. job, you get paid. That makes you a jobber. It ain't no different than wrestling. Yeah. You go in, you do what your boss wants you to do. You get paid and you go home. Right. So, That's exactly right. What I was going to say was, I feel like the, the the people, the marts, they're the ones that have made that word like they've made all the words like really bad. They were just inside words at first that we only used, and never you knew yeah. if you was a job guy, you knew if you were in the middle of the card, you you knew your role as the rock would say, uh-huh. right? Yeah. right. <laughs> it just it doesn't make sense anymore. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because, you know, take the term job or whatever, which, you know, they, they it's kind of a tongue in cheek um, word to these guys, but they don't understand that a lot of your jobbers as such really knew how to wrestle. 
were yeah, better I'm, in a lot of cases than the guys who were working. Okay. There was a lot of guys up there that I worked against that in a straight wrestling match, <laughs> a shoot or something. I know I could take them. I know <laughs> I could have, but it wasn't my place. And, you know, and I dropped names. I mean, Luger was one of them. Luger <laughs> couldn't work his way out of a paper bag. You know, he'd go in and he'd throw a sissy looking punch and he puts you up in this backbreaker or the, the rack or whatever he called it. And that was it. You know, he yeah. couldn't do nothing. Yeah. yeah. So he, he looked good, was, right? That was his uh, yeah. was gimmick. <laughs> yeah, was it. Was so yeah, so they don't realize we'd go to you know little towns of the Athens, Georgia of the world, you know, and we had little little regional titles and stuff, and and and, and we won matches, and we got to really wrestle. What they see on TV is, is a, a small, small portion of what we actually knew how to do, but it was our job to do certain things for certain people you know yeah yeah so like 1981 yeah. to 87 before crockett you were winning junior titles all over the nwa territory and you also yeah. you were georgia championship championship wrestling from florida you were all over the place wrestling all mm -hmm. kinds of great guys and like you were saying, you said you got your victories in the local outlaw type, but not outlaw. I don't mean it that way. You got your shows, you got your guys in the local scene, and then, but all, yeah. at the same time, you're earning your bigger money, you know, letting guys go over. Now, you were saying Animal. Yeah. Was that in Georgia Championship when Animal first came in? No, no, no. This was just a this was just a, a homemade animal. It wasn't a road oh, water animal. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay, because you said barbarian was like one of the first tough. I was like, wait a second, you wrestled animal. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, no, that, was, that, that, that was yeah, that was just a local guy that you know dressed up goofy and called himself an animal. So okay, that <laughs> makes sense. So talk about that early part of your career, the 81 through the 87. Cause like I said, I read online, you were winning all kinds of different kind of junior titles. You bring up action, Mike Jackson. I live in Mooresville, uh, the home of Nelson Royal. Obviously yeah. he's another yeah. junior champion. You guys yeah. really were burning it up. Talk about that scene as far as that goes. Well, it was like, you know, today you see the big names, you see them on TV, you get uh, what they have, the pay-per-views and stuff. And that's all it is. Back then, you had uh, it, it. It was very regionalized. Okay, I mean, you would have guys that just stayed in in one state or one part of the state, and they would travel that state and work in the same guys, just like the big name guys did a lot. Yeah. And you work in the same guy town to town to town, so the story continues. You know. Right. Um, right. promoters back then, even the small ones seemed to get along better. Okay. So yeah. you could wrestle tonight and then next week you could wrestle for another promoter, maybe 10 or 15 minutes down the road, you know, and there wasn't this competition and they would swap talent and stuff and certain uh, storylines would go. Okay. I had a big thing and, uh, actually down here with a guy named Buddy Valentine, Oh, yeah. He did a thing like go to Valentine. A really good, great worker uh, did stuff, but we just had a ball. And you know how it is when you got this call, they got chemistry with somebody. I mean, yeah. you just know what they're going to do. And yeah. and there's no worrying about protecting each other or whatever because you got confidence in this guy. So right. when, when you work him, you know, a couple of times a month at these little – indie shows or outlaw shows, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. And you travel around a certain area. Okay. You get known and the fans follow it just like they follow the big guys on TV now. So mm -hmm. in, uh, in the uh, Alabama area, like I say, got Mike Jackson, you know, he's well known in that area. Like uh, Nelson Royal is too, you know, the same thing, but these guys pretty much own the South and everybody knows who they are. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so that was, that was pretty much how it was. You know, you had little circuits that you wrestled, you know, you, you had a day job, a, a, a shoot job usually, and cause you know, you never know how much you'd be making these little shows. Sometimes, sometimes right. you'd make 20, 25 dollars. Sometimes you'd make a hundred or 150 dollars. It was a big one, whatever, but there was never enough to make a living off of. So yeah. 
yeah. Yeah. the advantage was being in the right place at the right time um, with the right kind of gimmick. I got to work not only these independent things, but I got to do uh, the TV stuff, you know, which was, you know, two hours on a Wednesday and uh, or three hours. And if you got to work two of the shows, of course, you got, you know, it was pay and a half, basically. Nice. So That's between awesome. that and the independent stuff, you could actually pay your bills if you were a wild young single guy like <laughs> I was at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors. And we'll be right back with more live and in color with Wolfie D. Taste the Mediterranean through March 19th at Whole Foods Market. Save on animal welfare certified bone and beef short ribs, sustainable wild caught sockeye salmon and more. Find sales on Parmigiano Reggiano, charcuterie and ground lamb. Grab an olive bull bread from the bakery. Plus, wines from the Mediterranean start at just $8.99. Taste the Mediterranean now at Whole Foods Market. Must be 21 plus. Please drink responsibly. With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're gonna wanna call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. So you brought up Eddie Mansfield early on. Now, that, that was the guy that kind of was blackballed from the business because of the Dr. D deal. Do you remember that time frame? Yeah, I remember. I talked to Eddie once every, I don't know, every couple of months. Still, I keep in touch with him. Oh, that's awesome. Um, he, uh, he wasn't pretty much a black ball, but Eddie was, Eddie thought that Eddie should have been more than Eddie was. He thought he was real big time championship material. And again, yeah. he had a lot of regional things, you know, and got in a lot of like semi main events and stuff, but he just never got to that top tier and he pissed off about it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Something happened with him and uh, Jim Barnett, I think. Gotcha. Anyways, and it pissed Eddie <laughs> off enough that he he went on and then, to what a lot of people say, exposed the business. Yeah. Now there had been guys who done the same thing before him. Okay. Oh right. Roddy Garvin, I know, was one of them. The Plan but B. They, thing. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So so Eddie went on and he, he had a little blade. He just nicked his forehead and showed how people bleed and and mm. uh talked a little about the politics, but he was just he was just kind of white and sour grapes when he got that. But of course, and John stations, Stossel. Yeah. John well, Stossel had yeah, was, was, was licking uh -huh. his chops to get a hold of somebody to tell the goods because he had just been slapped, you know. <laughs> well it's funny because because uh Schultz and Eddie Mansfield were tag partners. They tagged a lot together. Right, so right. They were uh, they were really good friends. But yeah, that was a uh, when when Schultz uh, smacked Stossel, boy, he went down. <laughs> he <laughs> he did. Is that what fake to you? <laughs> they smacked him again. Is that fake? <laughs> and Stossel goes running down the hallway. Now I don't uh, know the whole backstory to that. If right, if he was, if if McMahon or somebody told him to do that, or what, I don't know. Um, but I guess it was a a lawsuit that was settled, you know, out of court and stuff. So yeah, yeah. It's just like uh, Big, like Hulk Hogan did the same thing. Remember with uh, with uh, Bowser, uh, who just died actually. Yeah, 
right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he just got him in a, I don't know, a choke hole or sleeper hole or something and, and went right down and banged his head on the floor. It was like a front chancery that he torqued a little bit almost. The guy was like uh-huh. a, a twig anyway, you know, and Hulk's mm-hmm. got the massive arms. He probably just really flexed and the guy passed out, you know, but. <laughs> yeah, anyway. yes, yes. So there, there's been chance, things like that, but uh, um, Eddie, I think, was one of the first to go mainstream on TV with, with uh, exposing a little bit of the business. So I want to ask, I want to ask the big question. I got to know this. What does Hulk think about the, the, the uh, like, I guess, like, at first when you started WCW, uh, being on there on TV as Randy Hogan, and then kind of what's going on now? How, did, I mean, I know you've met him, right? Nope, never met him. Wow. Oh, I figured you probably oh. have. have you heard uh, it through the grapevine or anything? I, I, uh, yeah, I know the story. <laughs> when, when I started, in fact, my whole wrestling career, I had turquoise trunks. I had a black velvet robe with turquoise lining and turquoise uh, boots, and everything. That was my color. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I always worked as Randy Hogan since that Athens, Georgia thing. Yeah. Never claiming to be his like, uncle, his cousin, his brother, or nothing. Right. Never once did I ever claim to be that. Right. I had. Uh, so again, I never, I didn't dress in the, in, in the red and yellow, didn't do none of that stuff. So, like I said, I get a call from a vendor about, uh, I guess it's been off four years ago now. Yeah. When he said, do you want to do a convention? <laughs> I said, yeah. we're sure. But he said, do you do the, the, the Hulk Hogan thing? And mm-hmm. I said, well, sure. Now <laughs> I didn't. You know, but it's like when you go for a job interview, you don't really know how to do the job, but they offer it to you. You say, yeah, I can do that. And then you get your ass out of the word. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So luckily my best friend is a printer. Uh-huh. So I said, can you do these shirts and say randomania, same lettering and everything as the Hulkamania. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so he made me some, so I got red ones, I got yellow ones and, uh, then I progressed and got some royal blue ones, some white ones, and then I had some black. Instead of the NWO, I had HWO, you oh, know, Hogan awesome. World yeah. Order. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so just because that vendor wanted me to do that gimmick at the convention, and uh-huh. it, it seemed to work, so that's why I've always done it to this day. <laughs> so again, so- never claiming to be related to him or nothing else, you know. So I'm doing this one convention and it was, uh, the hell was, I think it was up in Rome, Georgia. Anyways, Mm. Jimmy Hart was sitting at the table right across from me. Oh, and I never met her for (laughs) nothing. You know, I'm scared. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. This was up in New York at the big event. And he was right across the aisle from me. And I said, damn it, I'm going to do it. I was scared to death. So I walked, (laughs) when it was slow, I walked across the aisle. I said, Jimmy, you know, could I get a picture with you? Just like that scared little fan going up to his hero. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Hart is like a hamster on crack. I mean, yeah. he goes a mile a minute all the time. Yeah. And he's, yeah. what, like 80 years old now? Yeah. So he said, you're probably going to take a picture. <laughs> yeah, always. So <laughs> I took a picture, and again, I thanked him very much in that. And I said, I, said, you know, I was a little nervous. I said, because I know... You know, you're, you know, best friends with, uh, uh, with, with Hulk and yeah. you got other business ventures with him other than wrestling. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just didn't want to give any, any heat or nothing. I was just a bit nervous. He said, yeah. no, baby, let me tell you. He says, not that you're the topic of conversation. He says, but your name has come up. He said, well, where, where, where have you? And whatever you're doing, you just keep doing it. It's great. He said, you've never done nothing to tarnish Hogan's name. Um, you know, and, and as far as uh, the drugs or, or go to jail, stuff like that. Right. So uh, he said, uh, you know, he said, I love the outfit. Uh, he said, no problem. He said, you just go with it. And took another picture with me. So to That's me, true. that was like the endorsement from Hulk. Sure. But, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, That's- you could do this gimmick again, never ever claiming to be his nephew or his brother right. or nothing else. Right. You know, yeah. once yeah. I was doing TV once and I think I was wrestling Abdullah the butcher 
and he had me across the second rope, and the the uh, camera was right in my face. And of course, he had his finger in my mouth, you know, pulling it back, stretching yeah. my face out. And Jim Cornette was doing uh, some of the uh, commentary, and he said, "Boy, I bet he wishes his big brother was here now." Oh, well, <laughs> you, I think everybody caught on to that, you know. So that's right. why. He goes on the internet and his brother is his cousin and I died, uh, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, <laughs> that's how that whole thing started. So no, I've never met him. And the closest thing, the only endorsement I got is from Jimmy Hart. That's good right. enough. Yeah, that counts. Definitely. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. And he only yeah. lives an hour from me. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Well, just drop so- by. <laughs> I want to know about this seafood restaurant that you had or had a bunch of them and still do or don't, or tell me about that. I don't, I don't know. Well, Uh I was in the restaurant business. Um, actually I started out, I don't know where I started out. Anyways, I ended up as a district manager for church's fried chicken Mm -hmm. and I had all the stores (laughs) around Florida (laughs) from Miami up to through Orlando. And nice. uh, then what they did is they sold the stores. They franchised them all out, kind of like Kentucky Fried Chicken does. So now I could have moved to the Carolinas to stay with the company or stayed where I was, which is down in Boca Raton, Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just loved it down there. Yeah. So I... Uh, uh, that's where I said, well, gee, I want to see if this wrestling's real or fake, called Jerry Oates, said, yeah. who trains people? Jerry said, well, down there, Hiro Matsuda does, but he's only trained, you know, Hulk and Luger, the big names. He says, but I trained people up here. So that's where I went up to Columbus, Georgia. So when I got up to Columbus, Georgia to get a job, I went to this restaurant called Po Folks, and I got uh, a job uh, there. And, I uh, I swear. Oh yeah, it was wonderful. They closed it. So, but anyways, uh, so that's what I did is I managed the poor folks restaurant while I was paying for my wrestling training. So after Steiner kind of put me out of business, um, and I moved back to Florida, I said, well, what am I going to do now? Um, there was an ad to paper for an assistant manager for this little Cedar river seafood. It was called, um, in Lakeland, Florida. And so I, uh, I applied and got the job and they opened a new store and that manager went to the new store. So now they made me general manager. Well, that lasted mm. for about a year until, uh, um, they were going to close the restaurant, just low volume. Mm. And that's why I said, well, don't close it. Let me buy it. And they said, we don't have a franchise program. Well, let's start one. And we did. <laughs> so I had that restaurant uh, and then I opened up another one on the north side of Lakeland, and uh, it was called. So I changed it a little bit to Randy Hogan's Cedar River Seafood. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and, and I was like a Ronald McDonald. You know, little kids would come in, and I give them a five by seven uh, picture, and I'd autograph it, and tell them about this guy and that guy, and uh, <laughs> like I said, I was like a Ronald McDonald. You know, mom and dad says, "Where do you want to go to eat this?" kids. Oh, let's go see Randy Hogan. That's so, awesome. so that's how I started. Yeah. So I got divorced and I lost one of the restaurants and, oh. and then I ended up opening another one and, uh, and ended up with, uh, with six restaurants. And so, yeah. you know, got out of the one by one. And then, like I said, uh, 10 years ago, I sold my last one. What would you retired? What would you have compared it to, like a Red Lobster almost, or like, are yes. you talking, yeah, okay. Like a Red Lobster, almost exactly like a Red Lobster. Okay, that's nice. I love Red Lobster. <laughs> I just yeah. ate there yeah. like the day for the first time in forever. I love Red Lobster. It was good. Yeah. 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 So that, that was my biggest uh, competitor, you know, but uh, being a mom and pop in a smaller town, you know, I, I kind of got, I just got lucky here. You know, like, yeah, just the right place, the right time. And, and I changed yeah. the menu a little bit, which they said I could do if I wanted. So, cause they were strictly seafood at the time. So I put on, you know, uh-huh. steak and prime rib and other stuff like this too. And yeah, because and that I opens do. up an extra level of people. Cause the wife likes seafood, the husband wants a steak, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, that's how you go to a steakhouse and they've always got some fish or something down. Right, exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. 
So that's awesome. Well, let me just ask then, while we're at it, what's your favorite seafood, Randy? Man. <laughs> the gun to your head. What's your favorite seafood? <laughs> well, when I go out to get seafood, um, actually, my favorite seafood is sushi, okay? Oh, okay. <laughs> Raw yeah. fish, yeah. But no, yeah. I, I love my coconut shrimp, and yeah. I love my clam chowder. Okay. Those are my know. favorite. That's what I gauge the restaurant by, basically, is, is <laughs> the, the chowder. I'm really not a fish guy. It's funny because I don't... Like I said, I love sushi. In fact, I had it last night for dinner, but mm-hmm. I don't like fish. Now, I it's like life. shellfish, you know, shellfish. like lobster yeah. and shrimp and, and yeah. crabs and stuff. Yeah, but just a fish, fish, I don't know. It's always got a fishy taste to it. I don't Me like too, it. man. I'm with you, brother. <laughs> Sam is uh, pretty I'm good. But, every you know. single bit of it. Every single bit of it. Uh, uh, I don't. Well, you, you seem like a I, I scallops love, person or something I to me. Fucking, how, you, you already knew that. You had to. I like scallops. No, I didn't that do that. that. Broiled, broiled scallops, those big ones. I love yeah. them, man. Love yeah. Them. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I love well, scallops. I'm a crab, lobster, whatever. Throw it at me. Crab yeah. legs. <laughs> well, scallops, are they're, uh, you got to be really careful when you get them. About 70% of your restaurants, they use... Well, they, they they call them the blown, the the real big ones, you know. Once yeah, they yeah. hit the heat, they shrink down because they they yeah. think they they blow a small one up with this sodium tripolyphosphate or something, the chemicals to blow her up. So when they shrink it down, it goes. Unless they're a dry pack, a dry gotcha. pack is they come out of the shell or they go in the bucket. So, but right. they cost restaurants a lot more. But they're a oh, world of difference. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. Well, what about that place up in Baltimore called Jimmy's Famous Seafood? Have you ever been there, Randy? Oh, man, dude, I love that. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's the I wrestling. That's there. like the American Ribera, basically, for, oh, for wrestlers. It uh, seems like. I, 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 yeah, I never heard of it before, okay? Yeah, yeah. But we're doing, uh, you know, we're doing the convention up there. There was me and, uh, uh, me and Demolition. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Okay. And uh, so that's it's Scott Wilder that anyways, we went and man, I, it, it is just so worth the reputation that it has. That's awesome. Again, I just had my favorite. I had two bowls of chowder. You know? <laughs> now they're, they're not inexpensive at all, but no, man, no. they yeah. were so good and they were jam packed with people, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> two bowls but of clam chowder. It. <laughs> oh, he likes his chowder. Oh, I was so, oh, I was so good, you know. Just yeah. a little bit of that bacon taste to it, but it's not bacony. And oh, right. I don't know. Making me hungry. I just have an orgasm thinking about it here. <laughs> hey, that's a first on hey, the show, we, Wolfie. <laughs> Randy, yeah, yeah. Randy, what do you got coming up, man? Anything? Ah, uh, yeah, I got a, a couple little things right here next to my house, about two hours away. Um, April 8th in Waldo, Florida. It's a kid fest. It's like a, I don't know, got like a, a, a local once a year thing. They have this right. like carnival and petting zoo and all kinds of stuff. There you go. And me and LA smooth and, uh, Kane, just the three of us are going to be up there with uh, nice. Jimmy Hart. Okay. So Very cool. we're doing that in April. And then I've got, uh, uh, WrestleCon 80 coming up and oh, well, there's another one I forget what it's called, something up in Rhode Island so uh, sporadically yeah. about every second or third month I got, I got something got a, up. I know you got an action figure coming out that's on pre-sale right now, is that right? I yeah. do, I do, I was so excited you know yeah, yeah, it's insane. Shane Martin, he makes action figures for guys just like you. He's a friend of the show. It's thirty nine ninety nine. Includes shipping in the continental U.S. You can order from Sham the Man seventy three at gmail dot com. Now the pre order for this ends on the twenty first. This is dropping on the thirteenth. It's ending on the twenty first. So get your order in. They're the Galoob style. It looks incredible. Randy, you've never it looked better, look brother. Really good. Yeah, I tell you, I was so excited to get the call. I mean, I never knew nothing. And then Shane called and explained, well, you know, he's trying to to keep uh, 
uh, to keep alive the enhancement people, you know, yes, he's doing yes. like me and Reno Riggins and, and, Tony and, guys. Falk and, and he yeah, said, Tony like, yeah, Falk. he said, I'd like to do this. And I said, well, I don't know. I'm thinking he's just another guy scamming, you know? Sure. So then he called me all the time. I want to do this, do that, do that, but I don't see nothing. Then all of a sudden he sends me this picture, you know, which needed some, <clears throat> some work, but I said, wow, this must be really for real. You know, <laughs> so then it got down to finally we got the black robe with the turquoise, okay, and everything. It's 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 about as close to me as you could get, okay. Yeah. And yeah. again, and people are saying, you know, do you know anything about it? Yes, I fully endorse it. So that's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm Shane's totally excited guy. about it. Yeah, Shane's a great the guy, work, and they the I've seen the work, and they look really good. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Um, Jimmy, you got anything else for Randy? You know, one more question. I just got to know, you know, the Jim Cornette photo with the, you know, you guys yeah. mocking the Fred Blassie Hulk Hogan photo. Talk about that. Was that just an off the cuff kind of thing that just yeah. happened? Yeah. Yes. And it was for uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And I think it was May of May of 89, I think, that episode. Anyways, I took that whole page, made copies of it, and I sell it with my pictures of that. <laughs> anyway. That's awesome. Yeah. I just got done with a match, and I come back, and, and Bill After, of course, was there. And uh, his photographer, I think Craig was his name. I don't know. Blonde hair. Really nice guy. Anyways, he goes, he's coming. I want to do something with you. So we're, we're talking. He was just going to do some kind of a, of a picture of some kind. And... Uh, Jimmy Cornette was there and he said, what are you doing? And, uh, and after kind of a slide, well, we're trying to put something here together with, with, uh, with Randy, you know, kind of a tongue in cheek thing. And Cornette says, well, let me be in it. So he gets this piece of paper and writes a 24 on it. Cause they had Blassie's and Hogan's picture there. And he says, here, let's do this. So yeah, just off the cuff and Jimmy Cornette says, well, let me be in it and do this and hold up the 24. And that was it. That's so awesome. yeah, and totally, totally unannounced. Didn't know what was going to happen. I said, I had just gotten out of the ring. He said, okay, now I want you to, I want you to put your arm up like you're flexing, but don't flex. And get <laughs> some kind of a, uh, a mean look on your face or something. Yeah. So, and that was it. That was the whole thing, the whole backstory and everything. Next thing I know, it's in Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Cool. Yeah. But, uh, uh, that, yeah, that was, that, was, that was kind of a, a Bill after wanted to do something, and Cornette said, well, geez, let's do this. He wanted to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for All right, coming Randy, on, we brother. Thank you for coming on man, so much, man, but I think we need to take it home. Um to the house. Hi, right, brother. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for keeping an old busted up guy like me somewhat relevant. I am <laughs> man, well, so like, thankful to I, guys like you, Wolfie. Absolutely. Man, thank you. Thank you. But like I say, when I met you, man, I thought you was a, a really nice guy. And, you know, um, that's, that goes a long way with me. So that, I don't, I love having yeah, people on you. here that I know and that, you know, I, I know I ain't dickheads behind the scenes you know what i mean <laughs> so, yeah sure <laughs> but uh hey man uh jimmy what are we coming back with after we let randy take it to the house well one more time insane shane action figure sham the man 73 at gmail.com randy hogan action figure get yours pre-ordered now and we're coming back with ask wolfie anything dj hit the music thank, thank you thank randy you. That's all. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right, we are back with Ask. Wolfie D anything and Wolfie D we got some really good questions brother I think these are going to be fun for you first of all let's thank Randy Hogan for coming on Randy was awesome thank yeah. you Randy definitely appreciate it. what a nice dude man like just oh, a class act super nice guy 
Yeah, for sure. So, Randy, in honor of you, we're going to ask Wolfie some questions here. <laughs> so, anyway, thank y'all for sticking around for Ask Wolfie D Anything. And this one, the first one is from The Plastic Chic at GMBMPW on Twitter. And he asks this question. The New Jack Vic Grimes spot. Yeah. You know, so obviously you're familiar with that crazy spot. Uh, of so, course, yeah. yeah. What, what is the scariest <laughs> bump you've ever seen? Seen? Yeah, or been a part of shit that probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, he's like you didn't die, man, yeah. or, or really get fucked up bad. You know what I'm saying? Totally, totally. Well, maybe uh, I guess at a show you were at. Were you at that show? No. Yeah. No. So I mean, is there one you've been a part of that was really scary? Hmm. Man, not anywhere near that shit, man. I mean, the only thing worse than that would be Owen Hart. Right. You know, uh, but right. as far as me seeing something that fucked up, man, I can't say that I have, man. Yeah. I mean, okay, well, then bring it down to the level that you have seen. So, <laughs> so don't compare it to that one. What is the scariest you've been a part of or seen? You know, that was the question. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. That's fucking nuts. And then the mankind bump, okay? Those yeah. bring if I guess if it's down a notch because he planned his his flight, uh, but still fucked him up. And even the bump through the the choke slam through the cage was oh my god, it looked like it killed him. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd say that would have to take the cake as far as kind of you know because Vic didn't intend to get fucking thrown like that. No. Uh, anyway. Yeah, so yeah. the mankind bump. I'll go with that. Okay, the mankind bump. So you've never been a part of really a scary move, then? I mean, I've done some scary shit, but not on those levels, man. I mean, I've jumped out of balconies and stuff, but I can't say it was scary. Right. I took the bumps out. I've I've dove on people. I've had people dive on me. New Jack being one of them. That yeah. shit hurt. Climbed on top. He got on the balcony and then on top of the railing and came down. And he's fucking probably two sixty at least. And there was that one where you hung yourself in MCW. Yeah. Is that correct? So yeah, yeah, that was. But that wasn't. Was, I can't say that was scary. I knew what I was doing. Yeah, you were. It was a controlled scary. <laughs> controlled violence, brother. Controlled violence. I love it. I love it. Well, that yeah, I think that answered that one. Thank you for the question, there, Sheiky baby. All right. Probably proud of you for like digging in on that question, Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. All right. Sorry. Okay, now what bump did you remember on <laughs> April 27th, 1995? Where were you? <laughs> Where were you? <laughs> All right. Okay, so the next question is from a listener on YouTube. His name is Gary Bam Bam Gordy. You got to love that. So the Titans jersey that you all wore in WCW, do you still yeah. have them? Hell no. Jamie yeah. probably does. I don't know. Jamie probably has yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. No, I think that shit wore out, man. I had to go and get rid of it. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Did you have to buy them on your own? Yeah. Okay. He's thinking that they were might be free since it's a hometown team. I, I don't. Yeah, I would yeah, love. No, I, no, I just we just felt like sporting them. Yeah. And then after the that was before the Music City Miracle, and yeah. uh, the next week the Music City Miracle happened, and then the next week we weren't booked, and it was it, like I said they were in Buffalo for WCW, right. Right. and death came out with a Titans jersey on and did got the whole heat thing. <laughs> Stole it from you directly. So the week after we did it in Houston and started going off about uh, uh, Bud Adams and shit like that, man. And uh, yeah, they let, he, I know Jeff did that on purpose. He left you know. us off. He wore the jersey. You know he did. So <laughs> he asked this question. He says, there's a match that Jamie enters the ring. I think this was with the Young Dragons or something. He mm -hmm. says, the match that Jamie enters the ring without tagging, and Wolfie looked like you just didn't give a damn. So <laughs> he said, good match, by the way. Do you ever remember Jamie just jumping in without technically tagging? Uh, probably. I'm sure it's happened. I don't, uh, especially some of those matches, man. We were... I'm not gonna say we were doing lucha libre, but we were we close were to it. Yeah, yeah. 
in and outs and okay th- this two pair goes in does this and then the next pair whatever but yeah it could have happened i don't know i mean we're not talking about a double down and then you're going to have to work to him this yeah. is literally a hot yeah. spot probably he just came in yeah so no idea. yeah hard to tell I right I, i'm sure it happened but i don't remember it, so i really can't say but I'm, yeah I, it probably yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, the next question is from Cause Effect. All right. And this one's a little crazy. It's Cause Effect on Instagram. So the term <laughs> Burt's Boys. So mm-hmm. is there truth to the term Burt's Boys? Uh, absolutely. But it depends on now. Uh, firsthand, uh, I, I kind of know where they're going with that. But I mean, sure. firsthand, never seen nothing. Uh do I know what his preference was? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, but here we go with wrestling, though. The Booker's always got his boys. Right. You know what I mean? Totally. Uh, whether, no matter what uh, sexual orientation that person is, he's got his he's got his guys. Right. But when you say it in the context of Bert, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, and I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Some totally. of those guys are friends. I don't consider myself to be one because me and Bert were always on the outs kind of, but he yeah. knew that I could come in and make his guys look good. You know what I'm saying? Totally. I say he needed me, but yeah. you know. Yeah. So let me ask you this then, and this is part of the question technically. So now you kind of answered that question, but I'm going to say it anyway. Have you ever had any advances toward you? Uh, uh Yes, but they were quickly <laughs> thwarted. Is that the word? <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> I, there was the one dude and I ain't going to say no names, man, but there was a, I think I probably already said it on here, but it was a, a promoter that a lot of people do know kind of a, uh, anyway, uh, we were at a WWF show and said something kind of, kind of out of the way to me at the urinal. And, uh, man, I've not lost my shit, man. I've been drinking and stuff. And, yeah. uh, actually, uh, Road Dog pulled me out of the bathroom <laughs> from killing this person. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's not because of, it's because of what he said. You know what I mean? Not because sure. I'm like, oh, there's a, a homosexual standing next to me at the urinal. No, I didn't even know this dude. Right. Right. It was just the unnecessary words that he said, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, at that t- point, he turns into a human, not anything that he prefers yeah. or whatever. So yeah. anyway, at that, you know, so that makes sense. And so do you feel like the term Burt's boys, you know, there is truth behind it and for sure. Yeah. OK, well, well I'm pretty much done with that question because, I, you know, there's it's only pain, agony and misery going <laughs> down that path. So. Yeah. We'll we'll leave that one alone. So, do you have one more in you, brother? Yeah, man. All right. So, this one is an interesting question. So, what is your favorite basketball shoe to wrestle in? <laughs> uh, my Dion's had a lot of good matches in them. Um, yeah. um, but the pair that I wore. I give my boy Brandon Swanner. He probably ain't listening, but I give him props anyway. Shoe collector that gave me those uh, the ones that I wore um, on the Ric Flair's pay per view. Those were fucking sweet. Those are like three hundred or better uh, shoes, three hundred dollars or better. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And they had never been worn, and he let me wear them. Wow, that's cool. Now, did you crease the toe? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, they're always about that. People, I've seen people walk weird. Because they don't want to crease their toe. Yeah. And I'm uh, looking at all my shoes and they're creased. <laughs> but I got these these little kind of fabric, no um, no laces Adidas that I love. They're so comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, those are nice. I've seen got those. Three pairs of them, different colors and shit. You can kind of mix and match. I love it. Yeah, those are good. I'm all about the no. I, I have some boots I wear. I have all kinds of stuff I wear without laces just because that's how I live. In the summer, it's shorts and flip-flops for me the whole time, man. I'm just always like that. But anyway, that's it for Ask Wolfie D anything. And, and you know, the the I think I think this was a you know, a good, you know, question and answer session here with you, Ask Wolfie. So, <laughs> yeah, it was cool, man. And uh, 
you'll see if we make it happen uh we'll let the folks know next week you're gonna uh, really want to tune in because as of right now we're gonna we're gonna supposed to have jamie back on the show so you got <sighs> keep keep it posted and uh or keep we'll keep you posted uh, he's back <laughs> yeah. yes who's back back again guys <laughs> Yeah, I love for <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. All That's right. awesome. Thank you so much again. Tune in next week because I, th- I think we got Jamie, like I said. And uh, just as always, thank you for listening and share this, please. Live and in color. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all, and all they ask is, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey everyone, this is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you are interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M, the man, 73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World. This is the big picture, Michael Jablonski. Don't forget to tune in every week to Jablonski's Pissed Off on the Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling YouTube channel. The fuck's wrong in this sport? He's gonna tell you all about it. He doesn't care what you think. You're gonna hear all about it by Jablonski. If you're a pro wrestling fan, there's something for everyone at the Cheap Heat TV Podcast Network. From the Pro Wrestling Discussion Show, Cheap Heat TV Live, to the Interview Show, the Jackson Interaction Podcast with the king of all wrestling media, Gene Jackson, to the silliness of the Whitey Jenkins Show, and the brand new Zip, Xander's Irresistible Podcast with Charles Anders, you can check them all out and much more over at CheapHeatTVLive.com. If you're a fan of rock music, I'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to check out my podcast. It's called the Decibel Geek Podcast. We've been doing it for about 10 years now. We talk about Kiss. We talk about Ozzy. We talk about Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses and Metallica. We talk about all the legends from the 60s and on up to brand new bands that you should be hearing about today that you're not going to hear on the radio. It's Decibel Geek. Wherever you find your podcasts, you'll find us there. If you love rock and roll, I can almost guarantee you're going to love my show. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. Uh, I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Live Wolfie D. And then on YouTube, at Live and in Color with Wolfie D Podcast. Our website is anchor.fm slash Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way 
that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. Also, do you have a product or business you'd like Wolfie D to talk about? Let us know about it by leaving a recorded message over at anchor.fm slash Wolfie D slash message. Leave your name and contact info and we'll get back to you. Once again, that's anchor.fm slash Wolfie D slash message. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. I got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still lobbing in color, from rush your mother, utilize a hubcap, I'm like any other. Back in the day, I was N-O-D, and I was P to the G, plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times, tired of suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Played low for a while when you thought I was free. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Bad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks and over one for later. Not here to play games, so you better be real. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. All the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When I'm finished, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. Then I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby Huh, I got a cap for your dome 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 This has been a James Rock Street production